problem. So I'm going to take my flathead screwdriver just here. I'm just gonna use that to scrape the junk off. And this one's pretty good, that hasn't come off with too much junk. Sometimes you might get a lot of glass there. Having the masking tape will help with keeping the junk off the screen. Now if you have flat stuff like this white stuff here, don't worry about it too much. It's more if it's raised or not, and that one's reasonably flat. Once the big stuff's been scraped off, use your pry tool and just scrape it off like that. And that way you get a fairly flat result again. Don't worry about it too much. It's not that important that you get every last thing off. The screen will still work without it. Just do a double check of anything around here. You can see there's a small hair has gotten lodged there, so remove that one. Now, while you're here, you may as well also give it a bit of a clean round of the screen, but just getting rid of some of the garbage and junk there as well. Great, so before we put our screen back on again, there are three more things which the videos don't show you that are mostly online. So these are some tips that will help you save a lot of time and hassle down the track. Now firstly, I'll clean some of the junk out of the way that's come off the phone during the replacement. The three things are, I want to transfer this small piece of plastic to the camera, transfer the filter to the new screen, and use some Sharpie or a permanent marker to reproduce this black effect on our replacement screen. So I'm going to show you those now. So you've got your great new screen. Now before you apply it, you'll notice a few things such as that filter is missing. So we're going to put them on the side for a minute and remove some of the things from the old screen and apply them to the new screen. The first thing is this small little piece of plastic around the camera hole here. You'll notice on all three of the manufacturer's styles of screen that it's missing. So just place your finger over it to stop it from snapping off in a too volatile way. Just gently slide the screwdriver underneath here and that will pull that one off. Now, it's a bit tricky and fiddly the first time, but basically you'll notice a little two-sided notch just there. That notch is going to come around this camera and align in this bottom corner here. So I'm just going to get that one there and slide that in like that. Might take you a, a one or two goes to, to get that one in working properly. Basically that will sit over there and that will help keep that camera of yours safe so that you can keep talking to your amazingly attractive girlfriend. The next thing you'd like to do is change the filter from this screen to this screen here, the new one. Now I've just pulled some of this sticky tape back here and I'm going to use my Phillips head screwdriver. You could use a professional pry tool or something similar, but this is just so you can do it around the house easily. So basically get your flathead screwdriver and poke that through the hole and lift it up there. Now sometimes you'll buy one and they're going to have the filters on them and that's much more preferable. Uh, if they're a really high quality one, which, which we buy, it actually comes with a th all three parts. There's actually a metal filter, a black filter and some glue with some as well. So you can buy them separately or if the person you bought your screen is off is a good quality provider, they may have provided you with a new filter anyway. But often they won't, so what we're going to do instead is just get your iPhone base here and stick the filter in this little slot here. Now that slot there's actually a bit of a groove as you can see. Now you can attach it with some glue to the screen itself, but I find it's easier just to apply it in this little groove here and let the groove take care of the rest. It can be a little bit fiddly to get it so it's not sticking to your fingers, but after that it's pretty okay. Now one thing to watch when you're doing this, you make sure to be very careful of this little square here. It's called the proximity sensor and it's very important not to touch that or get things on that there as well. Now lastly, you want to get your new screen and you'll notice that there's some black on there. That basically blocks out a lot of the light for this proximity sensor here. This turns off the screen when you have it near your ear on a phone call. Now, as you can see, this screen comes with it already pre-blacked, as should all the screens, even the low quality ones. However, one in every 10 or so repairs, one in maybe one in every 20 repairs, it isn't quite black enough. And so if that's the case, you need to pull your whole phone apart and start again. So in case that is going to be you, get a permanent marker or a Sharpie or whichever brand you prefer, and just get your permanent marker and just scribble all over this section here. Doesn't have to be neat, just try and cover the whole area with a lot of black. And the goal here is that 
in that 1 in 10 or 1 in 20 chance that that part isn't black enough, you don't have to pull your entire phone apart and do it all over again. Hey, it's 2 seconds now and we'll have a lot of time down the track. So we're getting close. Good job. Now before you pull this part off and put your screen on, the last thing you want to do is bend the cable at these two lines here. Now don't be too hard but just give them a good bend still but not too hard and you should give a nice little shape like that. Now the reason for doing this is when you put your motherboard back in again you can have it all working maybe a week later if that is not bent the cable pressure can pull that cable out of the slot again and then your screen has will start working and that's a bit of a pain so you want to do that at first as well. Then pull your cover off and you'll be good to go. So we've got our screen, our plastic bit, our filter, the button's still there, it's been cleaned down, we've prepared the screen here, we've bent the cable, we've removed the red stuff, we're going to just unbend it a little bit, and we're about to put our screen back on again. Now the key thing here is be very gentle, you want to poke these through that hole, just like that, and gently put them through. Now don't squish them at this stage, because what's going to happen is, you're going to get this issue here. You see there how the cables are different lengths. If you squash that, you'll bend the cable too badly and you'll have to do the whole job again with a brand new screen. So what you want to do is you can probably just see in there how that cable is bent way more than it needs to be. So you want to gently get the shorter one and very gently just jimmy it through a little bit. And before you squeeze it shut with those last few millimetres which will clamp it, just make sure the cables are the same length. And if they are, double check close and then double same length and that will save your phone a great deal of pain and hassle. Now have a quick look around, before you press too hard you make sure it's not lifted on any of the sides. If you had any glass left underneath there and you squeeze that hard it's going to crack your screen again and that will again require you to replace your screen all over again. And now we are ready to reassemble. Now the video for this is a separate one but just click the link below and I'll show you all the reassembly steps to get your iPhone back and laughing.